computer. All right, what's going on, guys? Rich Schneider right here, Night Report, joined by Chris Nowoski, our beat writer. Chris, what's going on, man? All right, Richie, it's good to be back. Haven't been, haven't been, haven't done a video in a, in a, in a while myself. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's been a minute. Um, I want to try to do this like once a week. I was telling you before, mm. um, kind of like a recap of the week, just checking out everything going on with Rutgers. We got spring ball, we got recruiting, we got uh, <laughs> Rutgers baseball killing it. Mm-hmm. Um, lacrosse soccer mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. so i guess let's jump right to it we just got done with the shiano presser um greg didn't say anything crazy significant he did say that there were some injuries in the secondary i know you wrote about that uh i guess tw- two days 12 days ago 14 yeah, days some, ago something yeah, like that it seems yeah last week maybe yeah yeah we mm-hmm. know uh we reported the other day they moved Braden fox from wide receiver to db uh to safety actually mm-hmm. that's such a weird one because i can't find any defensive film on him <laughs> So I don't know where that came from. I get it. Like he's long, he's lengthy. And we know Fran Brown and Shannon like those six, two, six, three defensive backs. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he made a couple nice tackles based off like an Instagram post I saw, but <laughs> like, I, I don't know how much you base that off of. He's no, there's nowhere. There's no way he's like in the second string or even. Maybe, nah, maybe probably not. I mean, I mean, he's, he's, he's only a freshman. Like he just, he just, he just got there. So, I mean, he has, he has time. He has, you know, five years, four years, whatever it is. So yeah. he has well, time. I mean, um, you heard yeah, They have a, a lot of dudes. receivers already. So maybe, you know, maybe, I mean, maybe he wasn't as fast as, you know, the rest of the guy. I know obviously with Sean Gleason's offense, they don't really have a lot of taller, taller, bigger receivers. They're going mm. for like this shiftier, faster guy. So maybe that's something to do with it too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like you said, there's, you know, Maybe, he, you know, it's it's all new for him on defense. Yeah, it, it's definitely interesting. Um, actually, you know, I take it back. He might be second string based on what Shiano said today. They just have sure. injuries everywhere back there, and it's it's kind of crazy because I guess we can't see and tell who's who and who's mm-hmm. hurt and who's not. But, uh, yeah, I think they'll be fine in the end. He did um, show talk about Patrice Renee a lot, like a lot, a lot. So mm-hmm. that, that's got to make fans a little bit optimistic. I'm assuming he's one of the starting corners, probably uh, – Probably say across from Avery, if you had to guess, right? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, probably Trey Avery. I uh, have uh, Max Melton in the slot once they go, you know, extra, mm-hmm. extra DBs there. And actually, you know, going going back to Braden and the safeties, like, you know, remember at one point last year, they were playing, you know, a, a walk-on in the game at, at, at one point. So, you know, any any depth is needed. And obviously the injuries right now in the spring isn't, isn't helpful. Yeah, from the sound of it, it from – people telling us, I guess it yeah. sounds like Avery Young's already <laughs> playing safety or working out, trying at safety. So we'll see what happens there. I'm assuming him and Izzy will probably be the starters. And sure. then oh, I forgot about Christian Broswell too, who's going to come in the summer, mm, mm. but he's going to play corner too. He might even mm-hmm. split time with uh, Avery Melton. I, what, I think he's like five ten, So he'll probably mm-hmm. be like a slot corner, but uh, yeah, they, the DBs are, I know there's not a ton of depth at the moment, but they're looking a lot better than last year, to be honest, mm-hmm. especially at corner, especially at corner. Yeah, I, like, I like the depth at corner right now. Um, I like Izzy, and he, I feel like he is a baller. Uh, Najee Jones played well you know, at, at times when he was in the game last year, mm-hmm. in, in games last year. So, yeah. I mean, we'll see. It's early, you know. We still have some, you know, whole spring. I guess not the whole spring. Yeah, still have like two <laughs> weeks left of spring, and then and then he got uh, training camp. So Yeah, I, I, th- I think it's funny you said it's early, but it's like yeah, <laughs> beginning of May. Spring ball just started. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. And then he said they have finals this week mm-hmm. and, and next week or whatever. That's going to be tough. I don't know how, like, how you can focus on spring ball and learning this and then focusing on your finals. It's at, that's like, it's got to be the toughest thing in the world. Sure. Sure. Like, I, I had trouble. I had trouble focusing. Fine, on exactly. Exactly. Final, uh, finals are tough. And, you know, we didn't play football. So. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> insane. But uh, NFL draft this past week, no players drafted from Rutgers. Ton mm-hmm. of the Big Ten guys, ton of former Rutgers targets I saw. Uh, Jason Owa. Um, I don't. I can't even think off the top of my head. I know I was tweeting out a bunch uh, of articles. Emmer Smith Marset was drafted. Yeah, that that was a good one. I think he's going to be really good in mm-hmm. NFL. Um, who else? Who else? There's um, someone else I can't think of. There's I'm a bunch sure of former did. Rutgers guys. Mac Jones. Tw- I didn't. I didn't notice that tweet until I found it. Mac Jones tweeted at Rashad Blunt saying, "Hey, get, help me get that Rutgers offer. Like we could do this together. Like that's she, like she, like that's kind of cool to see and stuff. And yeah. <laughs> um, there was a bunch of other ones, a bunch of other kids sure. tweeting out their offers, a bunch of former commits under Chris Ash. Yeah. Well, D commits under Chris mm-hmm. Ash. No surprise there, but um, it does show you that like as bad of a head coach he was, he did kind of have a little bit of an eye for talent. A little bit, a little bit. A little don't, bit. Don't get on my back <laughs> for that one. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, Michael Dwumfor and Brandon White staying home, going to the Jets. Uh, it sounds like Dwumfor, not Dwumfor. It sounds like White's going to be a linebacker with them. I, I could, I, I could see that. I could see that he's, he wasn't, you know, the best in coverage. And I was looking at, I wrote up their uh, Pro Football Focus ratings, and he was, yeah. you know, really good against run and tackling. And then, you know, his coverage grades were, were, you know, very, very far down, down the yeah. list. So, I mean, obviously linebackers can, you know. I feel like he could be a good a good hitter, you know. Actually, it kind of brings up to what Shannon was saying today. You know, Christine Green, you know, started out as a safety, then moved moved to linebacker and was like a wrecking machine. So, you know, maybe yeah. he'll have you know more athleticism, you know, as as a, as a linebacker and, and catch on and you know be effective. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I really think he might not. I shouldn't say should be able to, but he should be like practice squad. I would think at the very mm-hmm. least, if he's really that good of a tackler. So we'll see what happens there, but it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think Dwumfor sticks. I really mm. do. I think he's like that Sebastian Joseph type, and his numbers were through the roof for a defensive tackle um, from the pro day. And, yeah, the pro day. Did really, he did really well. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. he could become like a really solid player. Not, I'm not saying anything like crazy. Sebastian Joseph obviously turned into a stud somewhere Yeah, along the lines, yeah. but um, I do think he could stick. He could be like a – I think Prevalon's on the 53-man, right? Mm-hmm. With the, the Packers. Pa- uh, is he still on the Packers? Uh, I think so. So. Not a hundred percent sure though, but I'm pretty sure he made it up to the 53 man roster. And I think, I think Dwarm four, if not practice squad could, could make a mm-hmm. little bump there, but we'll yeah. see. Yeah. You know, as, as a defensive tackle, he's really good at, you know, getting to the quarterback. Yeah. The man so. was just never healthy. So that's yeah. Like yeah he got hurts. banged up a lot. And yeah. I don't even know even if he was Michigan fully healthy too. this past mm-hmm. season. Like yeah. Maybe, but I don't know. No, I mean, he missed, um, he missed some time. He was in and out of the like, in and out of games too. So. Yeah. Now that, that brings us to my next point. Next year's defensive line is, it's intriguing, but the depth kind of scares me a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, like, we know the DNs are pretty good. We know Tverdov, and yet she's serviceable, if not above. No, I shouldn't say above. Mm-hmm. No, if not pretty average. He's mm-hmm. a good defensive end. He's a little mm-hmm. undersized, but he's got muscle. Tverdov, we know, came on late. I think he had four and a half sacks, three and a half sacks, something uh, like that. Four and a half sounds right, yeah. He's going to have another big year, I think. Um, so. My J. My J is going to be filling in for Turner, not Turner, um, filling in for Dwan Four in the middle. Four. He had a huge 2019, an average 2020. So, I mean, if they can get back to that 2019 season, he could be a force in the middle. Um, Turner, we already know, the, uh, the cock nose, you know. <laughs> best, best cock nose there is in oh, NCAA, yeah. according to yeah. – uh, what's his name? God, Matt yeah. Millen. <laughs> Matt Millen. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. That guy just <laughs> likes saying cock nose. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, he was like, like at least 30, 30 times. Yeah, that, that's like that. It's got to be put on the Rutgers bingo board this year again. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I mean Turner. Turner played really well last year. He he honestly su- surprised me a lot. You know, he was in the backfield a lot. You know, splitting through splitting through you know blockers, and he did he did well to me. Yeah, no, nah, really well. uh, Turner did really well. I actually really like Turner. And you know what the cool part is? He's so he's kind of so tiny at that five eleven six foot range mm-hmm. that he doesn't like he just the pad level is perfect for him, and he just gets right up underneath him and. There you go. That kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it, it, it definitely clicked for him. This year. Yeah, that um, yeah, he, he had a big year. So the defensive line, it's the backup defensive tackles that scare mm-hmm. me. But Mayana Hana too had a pretty solid red shirt freshman, freshman mm-hmm. year, whatever you want to call it. Um, he should be back behind uh behind my J again. Um, my J, yep. Um, the question is behind Turner. Mm-hmm. Iron Burke showed a little bit of flashes here and there, but I'm hearing he's still like probably about a year or two away of development, developmental wise. Um, he's still getting there. He's just a big body. You could stuff in the middle and stuff that run. Sure. Um, Jet Retton put on some weight. Is he going to be the backup D tackle? I don't know yet. That's, that's a big question mark there. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't really show me was, much. I remember it was seeing, I remember last year, you know, for the first game, you know, it was surprising seeing, uh, you know, Drew Retton there behind as the star. I think he was, I think he might have been the starter. Yeah, as, ta- as I think he was week one. That's yeah, and then, but yeah. I mean, when he came in, he didn't do a bad job, so. No, so now you got another option though, too, because Chroma's up to 280, I think it was, 285, mm-hmm. maybe even a little less than that. It might be 275. Let's see. Let's check, uh, 275, but, actually. Yeah, he, he's big enough to the point where you might be able to sneak him in the middle, I would mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. He's probably close to my Jay's height and weight, I would think, too. Six four. Uh, something like that. Um, he, cause he doesn't have the best pass rushing grade yeah. based off PFF and based off like, guess what we saw last year. Mm-hmm. That's only played two games. So that's the other thing. Uh, if he's healthy, I expect him to play a role either as a backup D end or interior defensive lineman backup. Um, I could see him being moved to the inside and then putting Wesley Bailey on the outside. 
I like him a lot. Mm-hmm. I liked him a lot out of high school. Um, I saw him at one of the Rutgers camps. I forget which one it was. There's mm-hmm. one of the elite camps. I think I was there with you that day. I'm not sure. It was. I'm not sure it was. Might have been. Actually. I'm not. I'm not remember which yeah, one. Yeah, I know he. Uh, he flashed a lot at the camp. He looked really good. Uh, last year he just. I think he redshirted last year actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he looks muscular. Like if I could find the picture, I'll put it up in this video. But he. Uh, he looks really muscular. I know he put on a good amount of weight. Uh, Rene Conga, another Canadian who's going to be a force in the middle eventually. Um, I'm trying to think who else is in the middle now. They didn't rotate like too many dudes in the middle last year. Yeah, no, nah, it was they. They were like, nah. Which is they had they had they had Turner, uh, uh, Mahana too. Yeah, it's so probably a little bit of a cause for concern because there's just no backup defensive tackles. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I think Ahana too and MyJ and Turner are going to do enough. That there'll be still be a pretty good defensive line again. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as Tavertov can create havoc on the outside and Anyachi can kind of force the quarterback a little into the pocket or force him out of the pocket, I mean, mm-hmm. um, they should they should be solid. And then the linebacker play. The linebacker play is just it's fog Fadokasi, and it looks like they're probably gonna run a lot more nickel, mm-hmm. especially with all the DBs they have. Why not? So I I could even see them. No, nah, I guess I guess you can't really get rid of those two. Those two are going to be like mainstays on that defense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're yeah. going to be gassed yeah. at times. But then you, I forgot you have Muhammad Toure who's going to Muhammad come in Toure, as a Yeah, guy. I think I think he's going to get a lot more snaps this year. He flashed. Yeah. I know he 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 flashed last year. He was really good in the wrestling sit- situations. Um, you know, I know Shano had talked about him still learning the game. He's learning, you know, all through linebacker position. So I think he'll be able to, you know, come in and make some noise. Um, and you know, it, it depends on what the what the opposing offenses do too. They'll have, I'm sure they'll have, you know, base, you know, four four three out there still for the most part. And yeah. um, you know, I I think you'll also you know see them still in you know third down passing situations. Oh, 100 percent. So did you see the picture he posted on Instagram the other day? Mm-mm, mm-mm. I'm gonna show you real quick. He looks big. Yeah, he mm-hmm. looks insanely big. Like he's gonna be a force to be reckoned with. I think he's gonna literally turn into like Kamoko. <laughs> yeah. I, think that's I, I mean, you still have Deion number. Jennings too. Deion Jennings played has yeah. played well. He played well um, in the in the under the previous staff. And I, I know we've talked about how he should have you know played played more than than he did over you know. One hundred percent. Yeah, he, but, he really um, should have played a lot more. Yeah. Um, I think um, that was that was the Ashes last year, right? I think. Yeah. I think he, so. um, Something like he that. Shined, right? He shined in like two games as a starter, and they're like, no, 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 back to the bench. Mm-hmm. Okay, Chris, yeah, or should I say Andy Boo? <laughs> Uh, speaking of Chris Ash, this man just got uh got a pretty good draft. I'm not gonna lie. Etienne, Trevor Lawrence, it's two starters right there, probably. Yeah. Um man, he's got his whole gig set up for him, set up for life with Urban Meyer. Um <laughs> let's see, going back to Rutgers. Uh speaking of NFL draft, who's who's next? Yeah. I mean, yeah, this year, this year was 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 small, you know, small group for Rutgers. Like we said, it was only only, only White and John Ford was in the pool for the draft. I guess you can call it. Yeah. Uh, next year, there's going to be a lot more seniors, a lot, a lot of seniors that are coming back for this year too, um, that are going to, you know, use up the last year of eligibility. You know, guys like Fadukasi, I think he's going to, you know, be a pretty good high, high draft pick. You know, he has he's really good. You know, all over, all over the field, really. He goes sideline to sideline. Um, and something like Tyshawn Fogg is a really, really good. You know, good size. You know, tub, you know. I'm trying to think of the word, you know, big, big middle linebacker, you know, yeah. set the perfect frame, I guess you can call it for that. Yeah. Uh, you know, Bo, Bo Mellon flashed last year. He did really well receiver. Um, Isaiah Pacheco, uh, depending what he, he hasn't really put up, you know, the big stats as we all think he can. And, but um, you know, he's, I think, I think he'll be an intriguing pick for somebody. I think they just got to run him up the gut more. Stop with mm-hmm. these outside runs to him. And it's just, I just don't think that's that's not his game. Like if he can run in between tackles, like a force that he is, he's hard to tackle. He's really hard to tackle. Run it right up the gut. I know Gleason's offensive game plan is kind of get it to the outside and let your playmakers use their speed to get away from people. But um, yeah, Pacheco is definitely the one on offense that's like I'd say like 60, 40 shot he gets drafted just because of his measurables and his his film's not insanely good, right. but it's enough to the point where someone might take a risk on him late. Sure. Um, I mean, he, he's gonna I, have I a big think, year. I think they could fall in love with him just, you know, going hard and working hard every day yeah. too. You know, everyone knows knows his story, and I think I think everyone, you know, he's you know, been he's been through a lot, and I think he'd only make him work harder. And you know, yeah. so I think there's a real shot he gets drafted late. Um, Bo Melton, 
I think he's mm-hmm. got like third, fourth round potential. I think right now he's probably around the fifth or sixth round, but if he has another big year, it's it's third or fourth easily, in my opinion. Sure. Uh, he's like speedy. He can do it all, kind of. He could, he could even probably play special teams. Yeah, he could play special teams. Yeah, sure. so, I mean, he was a so he. I think he was punt returner for a couple times last year. He had the mm-hmm. one punt return. For he a had touchdown. one touchdown. Yep. On yeah. Um, after that, on the offense, I don't really see anyone else. Maybe, 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 maybe. And this is, this might be me being biased because I know yeah. him pretty well. But Crimin mm-hmm. might have a shot. Yeah. He, uh, he has a good snap. Uh, his mm-hmm. footwork needs a little work, and I tell him that all the time. I yell at him for it. But <laughs> he, uh, he's got the size, man. He's yeah. like 6'6", six, six, like 3'10", three, 3'5", three, mm-hmm. something like that. And, and, and he's shown he, he could be versatile. You know, he yeah, started out of guard, and now he's playing center. Guard, so, center. Whatever, I mean, you know, whatever team needs, right? I could see him, someone like picking him up like, uh, like, like the Jets just did with White and uh, Dunford. Take a mm-hmm. chance on him. See what happens as an undrafted free agent. Sure. Um. After that, defense. Tavert. Oh, I mean, maybe maybe Patrice Rene too. I mean, he can. Yeah. Can't, no, hundred percent, Patrice. Um, I I really yeah. think Patrice gets drafted. I don't know where yet because mm-hmm. I haven't seen him play. And he, he does. Plays, he, he has. He does have the injury history. But I mean, he's yeah. he's a he's a good player. As Another far, Canadian. As far as we know. That Canadian pipeline to Rutgers is going to be huge again. I know Ash kind of shied away from it a little bit, or just yeah. couldn't land him. Yeah. He, yeah. He went to Sweden. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, now that Bob Frazier's back, they're about to have Canada on lock again. Um, Wesley Bailey was huge. Uh, mm-hmm. Renee Conga, Patrice Rene. Um, they have a little connection up there with uh, one of the programs. I forget the name of it. Um, it's like Canada Football Academy or something like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean that's that's a good one. Um, Mike Tverdov's technically a redshirt junior, I mm-hmm. think, senior, whatever it is. I think he's so redshirt junior. Yeah. If he has another big year, he could probably uh, he could probably get drafted. Um, my J, my J should probably get drafted mm-hmm. as long as he has another solid year. Uh, Fadukasi, I think that's a hundred percent lock. Um, I don't know where, I don't know where in the hell he's going to get drafted. I haven't looked at any draft boards for 2022 at all. No, I'm either. Um, I look, I, mean, I take it back. I looked at one mock draft because it had the Giants at 10, and I was a little upset, but <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. It had us yeah. at 10 and the Chicago Bears pick at 12, so I don't see us being worse than the Bears, but yeah, yeah we'll see. Whatever. Uh, got their, I, know, I know the Giants got their draft pick now, so it's, I know that's. It's, it's a big one, but um, Tyshawn Fogg has a good shot. I think Trey Avery even has a good shot. This oh, could, you know, what? I forgot about him. Correct. Yep. Mm-hmm. This could be an interesting like a uh, 2022 draft for Rutgers. If uh, yeah. and and then Chiano could use it as uh, another recruiting tool. Hey, sure, I came back. Sure. I already got like four or five guys drafted in year two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Trey, yeah. going by Trey Avery, you know, uh, Rondo Moore was drafted on the second day, I believe it was, or third yeah. day, early mm-hmm. third day, and then uh, one of the and he 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 shut Rondo Moore down from Purdue, and he did forget, really well against him. I forget where Rondo Moore went. I like Rondo Moore a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Cardinals, mm-hmm. it's another weapon for uh, Kyler Murray. It's gonna be nice. That's gonna be a nice old team too. <laughs> um, oh, I can't I can't even forget um, Australian legend, aka uh, Adam Corsak, the goat. Yeah, I know. Obviously, you know, a lot of punters don't get drafted, but no. I mean, he's 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 awesome. So he's he's consistent enough to the point where I think maybe not drafted, but I could see a team bringing him in and trying him out, see sure. how he is. Yeah, um, I mean, Ryan Ryan Anderson. I remember he was he had a couple shots. Yeah, he he had a couple shots. I honestly thought the Giants were going to keep him at one point. Yeah, I did too, to be honest. I really did. He what was, was close with Barkley. I know he was close with um, he was close with Daniel Jones. I'm pretty sure too. He was hanging mm-hmm. out with all them. And I see him golfing a bunch of times with them. Um, I'm surprised he didn't get shot a shot, especially because he was a lefty punter too. And it's just, I think that's so unique. But mm. uh, he has a shot. Um, I'm intrigued. There's one guy that I think could get in the league. It's Billy Taylor. You know what? I was going through the roster right now. I'm looking through it right now. Yeah. It, yep. It'd be weird. I mean, Rutgers is basically long snap for you, right? <laughs> Andrew you DePola, go. starter. Clark Harris, starter. Like, is there any other college team that has multiple? long snapping starters in the league yeah yeah I, that's a good it's good a uh, little like you know oh thing yeah well no one's if you're watching this do not steal that story idea we're waiting to talk to billy taylor and that's going to be our story <laughs> um actually i might try to get clark harris on here one day there you go yeah i talked to him not too long ago he uh he'd definitely hop on i think sure that'd be cool long snapper yeah, yeah. You I, feel like, I feel like they've been around for so for forever the crazy part is i think they were all under shiano too <laughs> Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's a unique, uh, <laughs> unique stat, I guess, for Rutgers. Yeah. Um, other than that, we talked NFL draft, talk Shiano. What else we got today? Oh, uh, we could talk. We could talk quarterbacks a little bit. I know today, um, 
that did not sound optimistic from Shiano yeah. at all. So, so I'll start. So Shiano was asked about the quarterbacks, just like in general, a couple of names. Um, he started off with Giant Langan. Uh, he says he's gotten a lot bigger. He looks more, you know, physical, imposing, even though even more so than he did last year. Mm-hmm. Um, they're working on him throwing, uh, you know, to keep keep defenses honest in his, you know, I guess you'd call it Langan package. Yeah. Um, as far as the other quarterbacks go, um, he says, you know, pretty, pretty generic goods and bads, pretty much. Um, he says, but he did say no one's been poor, but no one's really, you know, set the world on fire. Uh, you know, Evan Simon and Cole Snyder are battling for the backup position. Uh, I know, I know Vedral is still limited, you know, from his ankle. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much all was said. So. Yeah. I'm intrigued by the Langan. I, uh, I guess, um, compliments you want to call it mm-hmm. um couldn't think of a better word uh yeah but he um the langan package is going to be intriguing again it's i don't like i'm reading comments now someone already said they don't like the package get rid of it but this <laughs> man honestly probably won you the game in purdue so 100 oh, percent. yeah it's hard to like get rid of it when stuff like that happens but mm-hmm. uh i do think langan could be solid um he just can't throw like a quarterback he's basically mm-hmm. like tim tebow with a worse arm he's a running back or now a tight end supposedly mm-hmm. Um, yeah, as Tim yeah, Tebow yeah, is. yeah yeah um yeah no i i, I it's gonna be weird this week's gonna be interesting for Rutgers, and i'm intrigued to see what shiano says next week because like mm-hmm. you just said he's gonna up the reps this week and kind of throw cole schneider and evan simon into the fire and see what happens mm-hmm. um that's kind of the push one of them to make one of them like step above the fact that simon's not taking the job by the horns is kind of concerning i really think he could be a really good quarterback he's a mm-hmm. dual threat he's got a lot of versatility so does cole so i shouldn't say mm-hmm. like Cole's not mobile. It's just Evan Simon's more mobile. I think Simon ran for almost like a thousand yards this senior year. Um, yeah. It's it's not a good look. Mm-hmm. If you're Rutgers, you'd probably take another glance at the portal, in my opinion. I don't think they will because you don't want to annoy any of your right. current commitments or mm-hmm. you don't want to like – and Vedral's still your starter at the end of the day. He might not be 100% right now, but he is going to be the starter this year. And I, I'm okay with that. I think he's a solid quarterback. I don't think he's anything special. I think he's got an average arm. Maybe some can low argue probably slightly below average. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he's serviceable. He makes the right decisions at times. Mm-hmm. Does he make a bad throw every once in a while? Yes, but what quarterback doesn't? He's yeah. not a certain other quarterback that threw some really bad decisions here yeah. and there. Yeah. But I mean, he's 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 accurate too. I know he they they work on you know. The bomb, the bombs a lot to uh, Melton. So I think, I think, yeah. Still, so I mean, as long as they can that. get the ball to the playmakers, let the like what I said before, Gleason loves getting the ball in the playmakers' hands, letting them do the make a play or do something, mm-hmm. make a move, and then get open mm-hmm. or get open that wide open field, that open space. Um, Krukshank is going to have a big year, in my opinion. Melton's going to have a solid year, if not big year. I mean, Jones looks just as athletic as last year. Mm-hmm. They should have some weapons this year. They should make some noise. It's going to come down to the offensive line again. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just keep looking at the schedule. Ten, or Delaware, Temple, Syracuse, they, they should all three be wins. Um, I know my, my buddies at the Temple site aren't going to like that statement, but <laughs> I think uh, I think that might put the nail in the coffin for Rod Carey's career too. That only concerning fact is that Fran Brown might be a top candidate there. I don't know if he'd leave. I think he wants to be a head coach and it's going to be hard to turn down the head coaching job, but regardless, I think you start out three and oh, is Michigan any good this year? I, I don't know. I haven't really read much on them yet. Mm-hmm. Probably should do uh probably going to start some spring previews talking about uh talking to the other guys from other sites around the network, seeing who, uh who's who this year for Michigan, Ruck, or Rutgers, Michigan, Temple, Ohio state, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, yeah, like that. I think this could be a big year for Shiano. If they get a bowl game, that should be the goal right now. Sure. 100%. And that could be huge for recruiting boost. And then you're bringing in Gavin Wimsat, who's arguably your day one starter. Mm-hmm. I know you don't want to do it, or most people don't want to put a freshman out there, but he's he's so damn good, man. So damn good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I keep watching his tape like probably like <laughs> once or twice a week, and I'm just like, oh my God, like that throw. Like, yeah. Oh. And, and then he's mobile as hell. So it's like, I've been saying it for years. Rutgers needs a mobile quarterback. They got to jump into the 21st century eventually. So, mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that they finally have one is going to be so intriguing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see what's going on here. Nova can run a little bit, but he can, he's not, but he's like, not like, you know, Michael Vick or something running around. Yeah. No, no, not even close. 
But I, but I he, but we did see him in the first game, especially against Michigan State, where he did score on the ground. So yeah, no, I, Gavin Wimsat just intrigues me because he can throw on the run. He can he can run straight up. He um and he's got a really good arm. He's got a good mm-hmm. size, good frame. I yeah. think he's like six three, like two twenty, two ten, maybe something like that. Um, it's it's gonna be crazy. I can't I can't wait to see him play. Sure. Um, I I find it intriguing. He plays at a public school, but. It looks like they're one of the better public schools in Kentucky. I don't really know Kentucky football whatsoever. I don't think Rutgers – I actually got to look into that. I don't know if Rutgers has ever landed a Kentucky player hmm. in general. It's an intriguing one. But Sean Gleason, got to give him a lot of credit there, man. He's one heck of a recruiter. And then you look at the rest of the class, I think they're still top eight, top seven, something like that. Four-star, 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 four-star. Probably another four-star. <laughs> um, yeah, they're recruiting the, really well. It's insane. They're doing well with a bunch of dudes. Um, mm-hmm. Official visits. Uh, and I know we talked about this before starting this up. Shiano kind of said they're going to be a little bit different this year with COVID protocols and all that. Uh, they're probably just going to host out-of-state kids for the June ones mm-hmm. then host the in-state kids or local New York, New Jersey, PA kids probably in December like usual. By then, you'd imagine most things are going to be open up, so they probably go back to the New York City trip back then. I don't know what they're going to do in June yet. Mm-hmm. But I'd assume Top Golf down the road, something like that, like they usually do. Mm-hmm. Probably and go to like the steakhouse too. Maybe that helps. What'd you say? And the, and Top Golf is outside too. Yeah, that that, that helps too. And then um, they'll probably go to the steakhouse too, Steakhouse eighty five, or mm-hmm. one of the, one of those big restaurants over there. Take all of them there. Mm-hmm. Um, Shiano's house is also down the road. I know Chris Ash did it a lot. He hosted them like for Sunday breakfast before they left. Um, Shiano, I'm pretty sure Shiano got that big house back, right? I don't know. I remember reading about it like very early on. I think he not, did, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Yeah. If he did and it's literally down the road still, I can <laughs> see them doing that again. Yeah. Um I I think he had a huge pool too, didn't he? If I remember correctly, they had a bunch uh, of pool parties and stuff. I know, I know, I know Ash had like a basketball. At way, yeah, Ash had that pool, crazy setup like that. and then had me go show up the one time. <laughs> that yeah. was I just I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> That's one of the cooler things he did. I'll give him credit there. Yeah. He brought Migos yeah. for a personal concert for the football team. That's <laughs> that's unique. You don't see that every every uh, at every school. Um, let's see what else we got. Rutgers baseball. That, they might be. They're not going to be ranked yet, but they're getting Probably closer. Not ranked. They're getting a lot closer to making that NCAA tournament. But I think I told you before that yeah. the fact that the Big Ten canceled their tournament, which I I don't get because. It doesn't make sense. Every, Every other I, program like playing a big everyone else tournament. had you know tournaments. So yeah, but I mean, like I know that. I know somebody from we were talking to. Uh, I'm not sure if you were you know logged logged in yet, but they were talking about how how for baseball everyone's everyone's playing each other at some point this year. Yeah, so that should help a little bit. I know. Um, I think they have a pod series not this week, next week against Nebraska and someone else. Uh, that they, it's it's this weekend. It is yep. this weekend? Okay, mm-hmm. so it is this weekend. They That's... have they have Indiana Friday, Saturday, and then and then they play Nebraska again on Sunday. That, the fact that they swept the best team in the conference and mm-hmm. went two of one against the second best team in the conference in Michigan's in, the past two Indi- weekends. Is... Indiana's ranked now. Who's who's coming? Are they okay? Mm-hmm. That's going to be uh, or uh, I'm or at least first place, something like that. Um, let me check actually. Yeah, no, they're playing. They're playing great right now. It's it's yeah. absolutely incredible that Steve Owens has been able to turn this program around so quickly. Yeah. Yeah, five, f- uh, five straight, you know, road wins all against ranked teams. Yeah, that's that's insane. He, um, my question is, are they going to be able to keep him? You know, some programs are going to try to come after him now. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that Rutgers doesn't have the facilities is probably concerning. Mm-hmm. I know they well, I have. Think the... He's he's from like the region, I guess. Yeah, so I I'm forget. Sure that helps. I think he's from. Well, he coached at Bryant, obviously. Yes. I don't know where exactly he's. From. Oh, he's from New York. Mm. Uh. Sequa, Sequa. I don't know how to say it. I'm really bad at <laughs> pronunciations. It's like the middle of New York, though. Like, yeah. it's kind of a weird area, but he's close enough to the point where he might like it up here. Mm-hmm. Uh, his son also goes to Rutgers, so that helps. Um, I just, the lack of facilities is so concerning. You see, like, after watching a couple clips and like watching, I even watched like the first game against Nebraska a little bit. Mm-hmm. After just watching it and seeing your stadium, like oh, the way sure. it's set up, it's that's the first thing Nebraska. I noticed too. It's like an actual stadium. You know? Yeah, it's, even, it's a, even last week, I watched the Michigan game last week, and they were yeah. I know it's Nebraska place. technically, but it's so cool to see like that stadium on a college campus. Um, I found it interesting they have an independent league team that mm-hmm. plays there too. Okay, 
So I know like uh, idea, or I guess not ideally, this, this was supposed to happen years and years ago before Somerset Patriots started. Mm. They were going to build the stadium at Rutgers, but something about, um, I forget what it was. It was like something about the traffic pattern wasn't big enough or something like that. Um, I think the Piscataway mayor was against it or the Piscataway police chief had said something like that. Gotcha. I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah. So they were going to build Somerset stadium at Rutgers and play Rutgers and Somerset there. That would be perfect. Mm. Mm. So now the only independent team now around the area would be Trenton Thunder, but I doubt they're going to move from Trenton. That's right. just a heck of a, that's a heck of a move, but I mean, yeah. it would be ideal, I guess, if you want to throw another independent team in New Brunswick, Piscataway, whatever. Piscataway Pirates, maybe. That'd be kind of <laughs> cool. You, you can even like, kind of like copyright the, the Pittsburgh logo. You got the P and everything. Yeah. Like it, it'd be cool. is really black and yellow. There you go then. And it'd be cool. I think um, that would be an interesting idea that they should probably look into. But again, mm -hmm. if, the mayor or police chiefs against it. I can't imagine it happening. Now. Yeah. I mean, first of all, they need lights. So that's just the simplest concept ever, man. Yeah. I just don't, I don't get how they don't they got have a new lights. field, right? They got a new field this year. They got the, yeah, they got the new turf field. It looks nice. Don't get me wrong. I hate it playing on turf personally. I did. I've only played on turf once. I've done it or twice. Probably two. Yeah. Probably two times. Also. I just don't, the way the ball bounces on turf is just, yeah, it was, pretty, it was a lot different. Yeah. It's, it's hard to get used to, but. We'll see what happens. I guess that kind of gives them an advantage against certain teams. But um, yeah, I, I like, like the I feel old like a grass. lot of teams have that now, though. Yeah. I like the old grass layout, though, because you could always, like, if you had a good enough, like, um, landscaper, you can always put, like, cool designs in, like, outfield. And that was always, <laughs> yeah. like, sick to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One day it's like, oh, we're going to put um, diagonal lines. Next day we're going to do a crisscross. It's, it's just cool to see, I thought. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, the team's playing well. They're playing <laughs> extremely well. Um, I don't even know who else uh, – I know, I know lacrosse now is ranked number six. They yeah, started the Big Ten tournament in semifinals on Thursday against Johns Hopkins, just, I, believe, I think it is. Yeah, it's Hop. Uh, did Penn State lose? Um, I think I feel like I remember seeing Johns Hopkins somewhere. So I'm, uh, I'm I can't remember. Hopkins. I know there was Hopkins versus Penn State, and okay. I don't know if they uh, did they play? Did they play this weekend? Um, I'm trying to find it real quick. And it's kind of strange how like lacrosse is done with their tournament, but like the men's tournament was like super spread out. Yeah, I, I I don't get that. Um, yeah, Hop, no Hopkins lost, so I think it's Penn State. Okay, I might be wrong. Unless that was. Oh, uh, I found it. Hopkins won fifteen seven. Oh, well, Hopkins did win. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, their website's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, never mind. I lied. I typed in yep. both, and it turns out I'm on the Hopkins website. Ah, so here we go. <laughs> Michigan, M Michigan's playing Maryland. Oh, uh, both games are Thursday semifinals. Okay. So that should, be, that should be intriguing to watch. See what happens there. Um, that could be Rutgers' first knock on wood Big Ten title. Yeah, um, possibly. I know Maryland's Maryland's very good. I believe they're still undefeated. They're ranked in like the top five. I didn't really. Forgot. So or like they were like they beat Rutgers already twice this season. Ah, that's well, it's hard to beat a team three times. Put it like True. that. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously never say never. It's why you play the game. But 19 12 and 13 9 in those two games. Yeah, they're 10 and 0. That was Rutgers' only two losses, actually. Yes, yes. Wow, yes. that's – yeah, that sucks. They should beat Penn State handedly, it looks like, after beating them 22-10 to 10 not too long ago. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see what happens there. But, uh, <clears throat> of course, some fans are going to be excited if they beat Penn State. Everyone likes beating Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, Hopkins actually, is... you know what? Going back to Maryland, they're actually ranked number one right now. Really? Yeah. That's yeah, – all right. That's going to be tough. Hopkins yeah. is 20, I see. Per the Rutgers website or whatever. So, I mean, that's, that should be a big win. Um, see what else we got here. Um, I know, I know, I know it doesn't really get much talk here, but I know the Rutgers field hockey team, um, they played really well this season. They, the coach, you know, had a baby in the middle of the season, you know, toward, toward the end. That's it's gotta be incredibly <laughs> tough. <laughs> they were, yeah. They were nine, six, they beat in a couple of ranked teams and mm -hmm. they honestly just missed out in the NCAA tournament. I believe, the tournament, you know, shrunk down its size this year. And if yeah. it was like the regular one, they would have been a shoe in to make it. So that's a tough break there. But they were had they had Big Ten only schedule. Um, I think I'm pretty sure like the Big Ten was like is is the best, you know, conference for, for field hockey. I'm not like a field hockey expert, but I'm pretty sure that's that's a thing. Best conference um, in all sports, but well, yeah, we'll I that. mean they beat they beat Penn State twice. They were ranked number nine, they beat number four North Northwestern twice. Um, they lost to uh, number 12, Maryland, by one goal, two goals. 
Mm. So I mean, they yeah, had a, I mean, they had, nice. had a really good season. So yeah, I mean, I, I think I feel like um, I think I think I heard somewhere that you know all the seniors that are, are coming back they get with the waiver. So yeah, I'm pretty sure like really good. I'm pretty year. sure every sport got the waiver. If I'm not correct, yeah. I'm I'm 95 percent sure on that though. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's huge. Rutgers athletics as a whole. I know someone. I think Aaron Brightman tweeted out the other day. He's like, uh, mm-hmm. the sleeping giant's finally awake and it's eating. There you go. There you go. I, I like I, kind of made me laugh a little bit, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, all sports are looking up on Rutgers, and uh, mm-hmm. baseball's got a huge star. If they can make baseball in like a perennial good program, that's that's huge for Rutgers, and that's gonna be huge for them getting that stadium that we keep talking about if they ever do it. But, <laughs> yeah. um. I feel like it's tough, though. I feel like you need two stadiums if you're going to do that because you need one for softball and baseball. You can't just do one or the other. Right, I would assume. right, right. right. Um, and also, it's not going to be like an overnight project. So, like, sure. where are they going to play in the meantime? Maybe Point. Somerset? Maybe – I don't even know if the Yankees would allow that now, now right. that they own Somerset. Right. But uh, hmm. other than that, um, what else we got? Basketball is kind of quiet right now. They're still looking for a big man in the portal. Um, they basically have their team set, though. Mm-hmm. Andre Hyatt's going to play a huge role, if not starter role. Uh, Gio, we don't know about. That timeline's coming up for Gio and Ron, though. It's coming up pretty quickly. I think it's June 1st, technically, but, like, you see guys like Jordan Bohannon already announced he's coming back. Yeah. Um, um, did you see my thing in the war room last week about, about those guys? Yeah, about – um. Yep. who was it, Bohannon and uh, – Bohannon, and then it was, like, the highest situation with the Ron, and then – and yeah. Baker coming back to help with the NIL stuff. So yeah, it's I, I really think Baker comes back for the sole fact of like what you just said, the NIL, yeah, NIL stuff. There we go. Yeah. Um <laughs> yeah, he um he's gonna come back. I really think Ron comes back too, but I do yeah. think Ron could be a late second round pick right now, it looks like. Um I've seen a couple uh mock drafts go off and have him in like the 55, 57 range, like right on that border of undrafted drafted. Mm-hmm. Um I think people need to stop underestimating Ron. People are like, there's no way he gets drafted. Like, Ron's still a very good player. Even mm-hmm. though he struggled from three, he still contributed elsewhere on the defensive end, mm-hmm. on the rebounding end. Yeah, he's scouts, did... scouts like him. <clears throat> yeah, and he's he's really good defender. And I don't care what anyone says, he is today's NBA four. Mm-hmm. He's, it's, it's positionless basketball at this point. I forget who I was arguing with. I, I <laughs> Someone messaged me and said, no, no way Ron gets drafted at all in hell. Like, there's no shot. I'm like, dude, there's so many. He's like, he's too small for the four. And I'm like, I'll name like four of them. I got it right here, actually. I'll name like <laughs> seven of them. I'm like, Draymond. All right. He's not Draymond, but it's the same size. Right. PJ Tucker, Jason Tatum, Julius Randle, Tobias Harris, Kelly Oubre, uh, Kelvin Johnson, the Morris brothers, Paul Mills, have Jeff Green. I could keep going. Mm-hmm. They're all like similar size players to Ron. You don't need to be six, eight to six, ten to play the four anymore. It's not a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and plus, what Ron's is, pretty. Ron's Ron body type. Six, is he is he listed at six six? Ron, it's six six or six seven. seven? I forget. Okay. But his body type, like he's bulky enough that he can guard people in the post mm-hmm. if need be. Mm-hmm. So it's really not a big deal. Um, I know I had someone else. I'm just gonna keep going based off all these DMs I've received this week. Go, go for it. Uh, someone else <laughs> is like, uh, any chance of Braden Davis, who obviously committed to South Carolina? I was like, what? You want another quarterback? Another four star <laughs> quarterback? <laughs> But you got one, just calm down. And yeah. people are freaking out. They're like, you can't put all your eggs in one basket when sat. Yeah, you kind of can when he's a top 50 recruit. You can't afford to piss him off. So don't recruit anyone else until next year. <laughs> um, people are saying it's too risky to recruit one, only recruit when sat just because you need you need quarterback depth in the room. Think about it next year. Technically, Vedral's still back next year mm-hmm. if he wants. Technically, so is the year. Yep. Johnny Langan's probably back another year. Um, Evan Simon's still there. Cole Schneider's still there. Um, even though I could see like one of those two transferring out if mm-hmm. they lose the battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially Cole Schneider because he's in year three, four, year yes, three, three, I believe. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, today Shano said he likes the room. He talked. You know, and he, a little shout out that, for Shano to Albert Ricky. Yeah, yeah, he gave a shout out. Yep, that, that was kind of cool to see. Um, I was wondering if you would. I was wondering if you would. Austin's a great guy too. I've talked yeah. to him quite a few times. He's just so down to earth. He's he's undersized for a quarterback, of course. Mm-hmm. But I mean, actually, technically nowadays, I guess no quarterbacks undersized. Look at Kyler Murray, Russell mm-hmm. Wilson, Drew Brees. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's not a ton of depth there. But with Wimsat, Schneider, Simon, you'd think all three would have some game reps by uh, the time Wimsat gets here. I don't, those two should have time have reps when 
Wimsack gets here at least. Um, Schneider's already played in a couple games. The Penn State game, I remember he, mm-hmm. he didn't look too bad. Yeah, he, he did well. He did well. Four or four, yeah, five or five, that. something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Simon, you'd expect him to get some reps this year at some point. I don't know when. Maybe in a blowout against Delaware. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched Delaware. They're they're in the, the FCS playoffs. Okay, that's not a good sign. Yeah, it's like one of those trap games. But uh, sure. I forget who they uh, who they played. You know, one of my guys uh, that I used to talk to in high school. Um, oh my god, I can't remember his name now. Hmm. Uh, the um, what is his name? Oh my god, from um, New Jersey, from Bergen Catholic. I know his Twitter name. I don't know his name. It's like the, <laughs> it's uh, his name. His Twitter name is Cole Simba, and I can't remember his name. What is it? Oh wait, who, what was that? Simba. Cole. It's like Cole Simba. Oh, Gene Coleman. Duh. Yeah. Oh, Coleman. Oh, from, uh, former Bergen Catholic kid under uh, under Nunzio, who uh, I think he put like 126 yards up last week. Mm. So the fact that they're in the FCS playoffs, it's, it's kind of concerning a little bit. They mm-hmm. won two. They actually won two playoff games. They're facing off against South Dakota State um, this Saturday. Nice. So if you guys want to preview uh, the FCS team that Rutgers is playing next week, they're in the FCS semifinals against South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits. Jack. <laughs> um, I might actually want. It's on ESPN too. There you go. Yeah, that's um, that's gonna be an interesting one. I mean, Delaware is no pushover. They did have two games canceled. I'm assuming due to COVID. But 37 0, 31 3, 35 20. They score a lot. 34 14, mm-hmm. 27 20. Man, they score a lot, a lot. <laughs> Undefeated. Like, no pushover to start the season. Sure. I mean, I mean, Rutgers has a good defense now. At Rutgers yeah. is going to be bigger up front. So they'll, sure. they should mm-hmm. manhandle them. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see some of the, we'll see the cock nose. Julius yeah, Turner. of course. Julius Turner is going to be all over that quarterback. <laughs> I think they lose a lot of people too. But I guess technically they probably have the same thing. They could mm-hmm. probably come back. And, and then I playing mean, in, how know. does playing in May affect you playing in yeah, September? Yeah, I was, I was just about to bring that up. How's that, you know, how's that affect everything? I feel like that's going to hurt a little bit. Mm-hmm. You just don't have enough time to recover. If guys yeah. are hurt in spring and it's a year-long injury, they're not coming back. Yeah, like, yeah. having having spring practice is different than, you know, full-on games. Also, it's could they enter the a portal time. technically after summer and then just transfer to an FBS program if they're good enough? Probably, yeah, probably. Yeah. It's this whole thing's crazy. I know the craziest story I've heard so far is uh, who is it? Sam Martin played at mm-hmm. Paramus Catholic in fall, right? Transferred to Curtis, who's now playing in spring, and can and I think they're gonna have a fall season too, so they could technically play again in fall. So that's three seasons within it is I don't know, like twelve months, not even. It is. It's incredible. But well, yeah. Um, Speaking of transfers, I don't know if you want to bring it up. Art, Art Sikaski went to uh, Illinois. Yeah, but, yeah, we could talk about Art. Um, I, I, you probably read the article that I uh, mm-hmm. gave some comments to Illinois. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of was probably a little rough to him. But mm-hmm. to be fair, Art hasn't. Art never produced here. He had like a couple good games, but he not. Had a, I, he, he had a couple moments. A little bit. I don't know if I'd call. Them, yeah, we'll call them moments. I'm not going to call yeah. them games just because they they weren't good games. But yeah, I mean, they didn't trust him that much last year. It's the same thing though. Like every time he like, gets pressured, it's just. He's scared. He gets scared mm-hmm. and just chucks it away somewhere. Um, weird, like, comparison, I guess, a little bit. But the same thing happened to Sam Bradford when he started out in the Rams. Like, he just got pressured a ton. He got pounded just because of a bad offensive line. And mm-hmm. he got happy feet, like what Art has. And he just developed. He never really developed. Like, also, Art's like a pro style. I get it. He's a little bit mobile. Like, he can run if necessary. But he's the old school pro style type quarterback. And that's kind of what Illinois looks like they're striving for, especially after adding Donovan Leary too, mm-hmm. who kind of I shouldn't say the same mold because Art's mechanics are through the roof. They're hard to like compare to anybody, but he's kind of the same mold or same type of quarterback as Art. Um, I just don't know how a, a Chris Ash staff is going to do in the Big Ten again. It's yeah. Aaron Henry, Aaron Henry, Aaron Andy Boo. Um, there's someone else I can't remember who. Mm. They they're, gotta, all, they're all at Illinois. I don't think I realized that. Yeah, it's kind of trippy to see just because, mm-hmm. like, it's literally like a Chris Ash staff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know obviously they're probably running, you know, the post style offense, you know, the running offense that they did at they did a, a, a Wisconsin. So, I mean, yeah. I, I don't that's know who's good the, fit for. Uh, Tony, Tony Peterson's their offense coordinator. I don't know what kind of system he runs. I'm a, it has to be pro style because why, why else would you add Art and Leary? Who, right, who, right, who, right um yeah he's been the offensive coordinator at minnesota for a couple years so i guess not recently ecu Mm -hmm. 
Um, Appalachian State last year. I don't know if they ran a pro style or not. Um, yeah, I, I don't – I just – I don't know. I don't get this – the hiring of Chris Ash mm-hmm. coaches. But I guess everyone has kind of the same connections. Like, I'm pretty sure Bulimia and Chris Ash were together at some point in the Midwest. I don't know. I don't even think I said his name right. I think it's like Blema, I, Bulema. I think I, I think this is Bielema. Bielema? B- yeah. Bielema? Oh, yeah. Geez, that's all. <laughs> I know um, his offensive line coach, Bart Miller, is a guy we mentioned quite a few times when Ash was looking for one. He has a connection there somehow. Andy Boo, Terrence Jameson coached with Ash, I think at Wisconsin or Arkansas, who's their D-line coach. Uh, Aaron Henry coached, obviously, at Rutgers. Uh, I think I like I like Darren Henry. Actually. Aaron Henry is good. He, he I really the, liked him. He had recruiting juice. It's just a problem yeah. is no one else on the staff did. So. Uh, I really liked him. I'm looking right now. I don't think they have anyone else, really. Uh, yeah, that's probably about it from the Chris Ash staff. But still, three to four guys that had – relationships with ash mm-hmm. um it's going to be intriguing i know um they still have a quarterback too don't they have um Ishaq williams who kind of dominated Rutgers a little bit last year um, at the johnny Langan i'm package. sure because he was he was young right so i'm assuming yeah probably. he's the one that um i believe ran basically johnny Langan package and yeah yeah he's still um, there he's only a retro freshman oh yeah so he he's still back um they had another quarterback i can't remember <clears throat> they have peters no i think he's gone he's got to be gone right i think i'm looking at he's the gone. quarterbacks Ron Taylor was another one, I think. Oh, no, they do still have Peters. So, Peters is still there. And oh, he, he's your, I could have sworn he was gone by now. He, well, he's, he's on the wow. roster. So, he's your prototypical yeah, he is on roster. pro-style wow. quarterback. He's former IMG kid, I believe. Yep. Um, Let's see. He uh, Actually, I shouldn't I say former pro-style, but he ran his longest rush ever against Rutgers in 2019. <laughs> 50 yards. Of course. Yeah, but he, he's a pro style for the most part. He's most rushing yards ever, 76 yards. Um, he's not a bad quarterback. I'm intrigued to see how they perform at Illinois. That's going to be an interesting uh, – I think Rutgers plays him this year again, right? Um, Probably. I don't know. I just had the schedule up. and uh, I just pulled it up right now. Yes, uh, at Illinois on the October 30th. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, if you start out 3-0, Temp- I forgot Temple's the game season opener. I thought Delaware was. Yeah. So Temple's not a pushover. Syracuse has one win last year, I think. The schedule, the schedule is going to be tough because they have, they still have Northwestern this year, and they have Wisconsin as their. Uh... The only, yeah, the only plus side about that is that Northwestern lost a ton of dudes, so yeah. that's going to help a yeah, little. They had bit. a lot of guys drafted, actually. Yeah, too. yeah, they did. Uh, but Pat Fitzgerald's a heck of a coach, good recruiter, mm-hmm. so they'll, they'll at, be fine. At Illinois, I mean uh, Northwestern. Northwestern. Mm-hmm. I want to go to that just because I want to see that <clears> practice <throat> facility. Mm-hmm. That looks so nice. Um, no, you know what? Uh, you know what? That's two weeks break. Never mind. Never so mind. Temple first game, Syracuse away second game. Might make the trip out for that one, mm-hmm. just because it's what is it like three hour drive, four hour drive to Illinois? Uh, Syracuse. Oh, Syracuse. Yeah, about about three hours. I would say. Yeah, yeah I think I was not... there. I went. I went. I went. I went to the Carrier Dome for football game. Um, when when Syracuse when Rutgers was supposed to win like badly and Syracuse won, you know. Sanu was running the Wildcat at that yeah, point. I remember that. that was a long yeah. time ago. They had like sack after sack after sack. It was it was just a bad game. Yeah, that that's I think that was like 09, maybe around there. Uh yeah, I guess it had to be with Sanu. Yeah. yeah. Um that, that was a crazy package they ran for the longest time. <laughs> I, I don't understand that one, but yeah. Uh Michigan in Ann Arbor. That's that's kind of I'll say that's the litmus test. You if you could play them competitively or even beat them. Mm-hmm. You could have a really big season because that would be four wins in a row to start the season. You're not, you're probably not beating Ohio State the next week, but then you have Michigan State coming to town. So that, I hate to be so optimistic, but like that could be five right there. Beat Michigan State, <laughs> then Northwestern, who we don't know up and down year. Um, I'll even give, I'll give them a loss on that one. So just say five and two. Mm-hmm. Illinois, six and two. Wisconsin, six and three. Indiana, I mean, they, I, th- I don't think you could expect. I think I think honestly the bowl game situation. I mean, it could come down to the season's finale against Maryland. Yeah, I didn't see that. And I don't think Penn State's that good this year either. I think they have yeah. a shot. They still they they still recruit well. So I mean, they do. But they've it's been be tough. They've been, they play the coaches. No, really. For some reason, they always play Penn State pretty hard, regardless yeah, of who's the head coach: Nunzio, Chris Ash, mm-hmm. Graciano now. Yeah. Um, I know they didn't score much last year against Penn State. Right. I think it was only like seven points, ten points, maybe. Yeah. There, um, there was still a big difference in terms of uh, just the offensive of, defensive lines yeah, at that point. Play style, like it's it's incredible. 
Oh, one thing, one thing I want to talk about before we were talking about Pacheco. Mm-hmm. I, everyone keeps saying this, like, and I know um, the one kid from the Asbury Park Press posted an article about this. Could Pacheco run for a thousand? Mm. I, I don't know. I don't. Um, I'm gonna lean towards no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably say no, just because he hasn't really come that close at all. Um, they still, they still, I'm sure, want to get Aaron Young involved. Um, they still have. They, I'm sure they're gonna. You know, do runs with you know Kukchank and maybe Young Blood, even though Young Blood's banged up, as Shannon mentioned, say with a couple of hamstring issues. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, it depends on the offensive line. I know we talked about before; they didn't really, they they didn't really get pushed in the in the run game a lot last year, especially inside. So yeah, that that's a tough them, one. But... You'd think ideally they'd be a lot better this year. It's hard to say that though without again without seeing the team practice. Sure, um, that's never fun. Uh, I'm looking now. He ran for. 515 last year mm-hmm. he actually averaged more yards for carry in 2019 but he ran for 729 yards a year before mm-hmm. it i it's tough like you said there's so many guys that like they're gonna alternate in and out i think uh Krugshank's one that you'll see like uh end of rounds for even bo melton had a couple last year mm-hmm. um pacheco aaron young uh jameer wright collins is apparently making a lot of noise back there as a running back he's kind of like the big bulkier back of the group I could see them using him more. Um, mm. When it comes to speed, Al Shadi Salam, aka Shorty, mm. mm-hmm. uh, he's going to be he's going to be used somehow. I know I talked to uh, the East Iron head head coach like a couple weeks ago. He said uh, he's getting he's just training honestly. He's like in his own zone, just training nonstop. <laughs> um, they they are hyping him up like he's going to be playing a little bit. Okay. Uh, he's small, he's tiny, but he's right. he's kind of he runs like he's like Pacheco size, but he's not Pacheco size. <laughs> He like he's not afraid of contact at all, and that's what I love about him and about his game. I, I think he I, personally, I think he should have been rated higher, but mm-hmm. it took them forever to give him his third star, which kind of pissed me off a little bit. But uh, he, he's he's such a good player. He's dynamic. He's they're gonna. I after you talking to that coach again, mm-hmm. he's been telling me that they plan on using him everywhere, like slot, even some outside stuff, um, running back. So technically, he was listed as a running back, but he's gonna be used just about everywhere. Mm-hmm he's going to take some snaps away from Pacheco and that's, that's going to hurt Pacheco's numbers. Unless Pacheco has like some big explosive right. games. I don't see the thousand yards season. Right. I know. No, I think it was last week. Uh, when. Oh. You there, Chris? All right, we're back. That was a quick little uh, blurb. Blurb. I don't even know what to call it. Um, Sorry about that, guys. No, quick computer freeze. You know, technology. Yeah, not sure. They had, you know what? When I think it was last week when you didn't, when you couldn't make one of the Rutgers football things, my computer like just froze. Mm-hmm. I had to had to restart. I I missed the Pacheco thing. Yeah, you know, you're all good. If you want to just, sure I don't even remember where you left off at. We were talking about him splitting carries with Salam. Yeah, and, yeah. And so on and so on. I don't, I don't, you want to continue where you left off or what do you want to do? I don't even remember. All right, then we'll, screw it. On to the next thing. Um, I don't even know what else. we. Uh, honestly, we're almost done. Like, we're almost even, done, to be honest. Yeah, I really don't know what else to talk about. Um, um, they might add an offensive lineman in the portal still. I know they're looking at a couple different guys. There's a Juco kid we reported on last week that they asked for his transcript, so that's a start. You know, that's always like the uh, – the go-to thing for recruits. That's like your number one thing. Oh, I'm kind of mm-hmm. interested. Well, let me see your transcripts real quick. And then of course, but that kid was a December grad. So he wouldn't join the program anyway this year. Um, I know they talked to Charleston state, no Charleston Southern offensive lineman. I posted the other day. Um, it doesn't sound like they're too interested. They were at first, but nothing crazy. They were on a zoom call with him twice already with all rich and um, I forget what other um, Scott Valone, I think it was mm-hmm. um, something like that. I don't know um, as far as recruiting, if they're going to add anyone next. I know we posted about five official visitors confirmed already for June, all out of state kids. Uh, there's pretty unique. They got an offensive lineman, a uh, receiver in there, I believe. Yeah, receiver from Texas, mm-hmm. uh, offensive lineman, defensive lineman, two DBs. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about that or anything about recruiting in a team in general, we, we have a 30 day free trial still going on um you missed out on the june one i'm sorry to say you had free premium until until june 1st and you guys probably missed out on it but you still got the three free 30 days i can't talk today um free 30 days 
sign up. Uh, I think it's TKR30. I don't even remember, to be honest. Like, so many damn promos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's on, it's on the top of the website. You'll see it. Yeah, TKR30. You can't really miss it. It's right there and smack dab in the middle of the, the homepage. Um, let's see. We talked to Shiano next week. Uh, we're going to get a couple yeah. players on Wednesday, Tuesday. I'm not sure what day. They Probably maybe, most likely Wednesday, yeah. That's what they change doing. it up like every week, it seems like. Um, I don't know who we're going to talk to this week, actually. Yeah, I put in my request, so we'll see. Yeah, same <laughs> here. I know um, I'm trying to get some of the senior transfers to talk to us. Um, yep. I, the I, day, I, I tried. Sort of, I tried. I tried the quarterbacks. I doubt. Yeah. I doubt it. But I try. I tried it week one. They weren't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or week two, whatever it was. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, eventually we're gonna be able to talk to these guys. We hope. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm intrigued to see what they say about the transfer. The differences between like Temple and Rutgers and uh, UNC and Rutgers, especially mm-hmm. because I think Mac Brown's an eerily similar coach to Greg mm-hmm. Schiano. Um, just an old school football coach that loves the game. So I'm intrigued to see the differences there. Um, looking right now, spring games coming up fast. We got what 17 days left, yeah. May, May 20th, BTN, yeah. Uh, five, you know, I was actually just about to bring that up, so um, I don't know if you saw it or know of it, but there's uh, you know, obviously, five 5,000 fans uh, being, being allowed in. Um, there's actually different days starting on May 10th, um, until the 13th. It's gonna be like season ticket holders. Um, there's like different did different levels i guess before you can try really? and try and get in I didn't um, see that. so i think um, it's based off priority points yes it's like priorities um let's see so i have a list here actually so may may 10th 9 a.m for the fans out there if you didn't see this i'll let you guys know uh may 10th monday 9, 9 a.m is renewed season ticket holders scarlet society members i'm not actually sure what that is i don't um, know 100 donors to ticket to success campaign so if you fall under those 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 guidelines, you got the first 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 crack at it. Uh, Tuesday the eleventh is re- renewed season ticket holders, and one to ninety nine percent donors to ticket to success campaign. Uh, the twelfth is season ticket holders renewed, and then priority points one hundred plus as of June thirtieth, twenty twenty. And then Thursday May thirteenth is renewed second renewed season ticket holders. Um, I guess, you know, actually just everyone else who's a renewed season yeah. ticket holder. Uh, d- does it say anything about students in there? Because I have no um, idea what the deal is. In this email, it does not say anything about students. That's, that's what intrigues me the most. So they have, obviously, uh, 5,000 total fans. Mm-hmm. Does that include media is my big question. Mm-hmm. Number two, does it include students? Because you're probably going to want to get a good amount <clears> of students there. But it's a Thursday night. Um, yeah. I think after finals week. Um, let's also, no one's on campus, so like, how does that work? Right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's still some people like off campus housing and stuff, but sure, like, sure. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't get that. Um, exams end on the 12th, so yeah, and commencements on the 16th. Yeah, but that's all virtual so, too, I think, right? Yeah, I, be- I believe so. So no. yeah, I'm not sure. I guess local kids will come. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know. I know I, I posted something today because Jerry Carino posted an article talking to uh, mm-hmm. uh, President Holloway about everything. And nice. Yeah. he uh, A lot of seniors are not happy with him. Let's put it like that. <laughs> they they want to go be able to sit down. They think it's kind of a little BS that um, they could have a spring game, but they can't have graduation. But right. I think like, like they should do what Rowan's doing. Rowan's, I read, and this is also in Carino's article. Go check it out if you haven't um he said there's so rowan's spreading it out between like nine different sessions over three days or four days okay. so like basically it's just so you don't have a bunch of people in one spot right which which would make sense to me and it, especially if you're Rutgers, you're probably going to want like i remember when i graduated like you know how they had the big one at the stadium yeah yeah and they had all the small ones one was at the rack one was at the barn right. one was yep. at so on and so on like i don't see why you can't do that i feel like that'd be kind of yeah. cool or even like probably even use the baseball field to be honest yeah, you could use you use anything. Yeah, I I remember mine. Mine was cool. I had I had uh I had my you know communications one at the at the rack, mm-hmm. and then I had uh, Barack Obama in the uh, at the stadium. Yeah, that's that was that was wild, man. I don't know if you saw that. There was like yeah, there was like security everywhere. It was it oh was, yeah. You know, I mean they have to. It's so it's yeah, the president. It's yeah. <laughs> I got there like eight eight o'clock or something. It didn't start till twelve. <laughs> like yeah, I'm sure they like, have to insane. literally like vet you. They have to do this. They have to do they that. Had, There's probably had, more security at that than there is at any football game. Yeah, dude. Honestly, all right. Let me tell you. So there was like there's like guys like on top of the stadium. There's like 
there's like military security guard. Oh like, yeah, I like, can only imagine. Like, there's probably a couple of dudes on top of the scoreboard and all that. Too. Yeah, it, there was, there was. It That's, was, dude, yeah. it was insane. Yeah, it's insane how much <laughs> protection they have. Yeah, it was, it was wild. But uh, yeah, so I don't think they're gonna do that. Um, I think they gotta make an announcement for baseball, especially when the team's playing this good. Mm-hmm. Just to have fans in the outfield, like everyone, just pull up your car, separate. Like, not that hard. Mm-hmm. My, I was talking to my dad. Like, he goes to games all the time. Yeah. And he was saying, like, what if I go in the parking lot and, like, hang out on the roof? What are they going to do? I don't know if they're going to, like – I don't – honestly, if there's only, like, one or two cars, I don't think they're going to say anything. I'm not advocating yeah. for anything, but I'm just, right. just saying. <laughs> to make that clear, I'm not advocating for anything, but yeah. I'm just saying. I know – I remember I talked to somebody from Rutgers a week or two ago, and they said, like, the outfield – you know, out, outfield space didn't count for yeah you know, the, the seating space. That's why there's don't. That's why only only parents are there. So yeah, I know Murphy announced today that they're gonna open up things by like I think it was May nineteenth or something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I don't oh, know how true, many true. Maybe, maybe how that, many games know. are after that is the question. Like, can you sneak mm-hmm. like a couple fans into like this is their arguably their best season ever. Yeah, <laughs> you would like to have like some fans out there to come watch. Yeah, I'm trying to, I was them. trying to. I meant to ask somebody today when the last time they made the tournament. All right, so. May 21st. Oh, yeah, there you go. May 21st, 22nd, 23rd. They have a weekend series against Michigan State. Okay. Then, the, then the weekend after, that's Memorial Day weekend. I, I Maybe not a bunch of people there, but mm. um, that's also home against Illinois. So, I mean, okay. I, I, I can tell, like, just going on social media, fans want to go, like, see the team at least. Mm-hmm. You know how it works. Fans want to see a team when they're winning. They don't care when sure. they're losing. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, five-game win streak. Like, this is a good team. I can't believe that they're 12-6 and six away and 4-6 and six at home. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they won. They won five in a row against ranked ranked teams right now. Yeah, it's they they look really good. I just like playing at. I I guess they like playing at nice stadiums. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I know. (laughs) I looked into. uh, Someone was asking me about it. They're like, "Yo, they're gonna make the NCAA tournament." I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know about that." It's 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 tough. I mean, right now there's like some buzz, I guess, but yeah, there's definitely buzz around team. I was looking like right now. I have it from this is from April 28th. Teddy Cahill Mm -hmm. of Baseball America. Mm -hmm. He had. There's not one Big Ten team yet. I think there was two total. And Nebraska has a two seed. So that's huge that they beat them. But the 13 losses is still not good. Mm. Um, they have Michigan as a two seed. So that's two teams that Rutgers just won series against. But that's the only two Big Ten teams I got in there. Okay. So I don't know. I don't have Baseball America, so I can't tell you like more. I'm going to get right. more from Hector right. uh, to talk about him. <laughs> I have a – I told you this already. I'm not going to tell yeah. who, but – we have a pretty big uh, baseball writer that's going to join us tomorrow. Probably just do an article. I thought about doing a Zoom call, but mm-hmm. he's a really busy guy. He talks everything college baseball, one of the national analysts. So it's going to be cool to talk to him about Rutgers. He, uh, I think he recently wrote something up about them. He tweets about them all the time about how good they okay. are. So I'm pretty cool, okay. sure he's close to Steve Owens too. So we'll get a little bit of insight there. Um, Hector's obviously killing it with all the baseball content. We had another piece today. Um, got to give a shout out to Damon Sales. Guy was our basketball recruiting writer for a couple months. He just left. He's going to get a new job soon. He's going to announce it. But that, yeah. congrats to Damon. A uh, heck of a writer. I give him a lot of credit for what he did with us. Yeah. Um, yeah, he did a great job. He's he's he's, he's well known too. Yeah, us, well, uh, he works for Bleacher Report, us SMU site, Florida site. Um, yeah. The guy did it all. <laughs> um, yeah, if you know anyone that wants to write, write Rutgers basketball or recruiting, let me know. Mm-hmm. Shoot me an email. You got to go on Twitter. I'm on that like 24 seven. It's kind of bad. <laughs> an addiction, some people say. Um, and by some people, I mean that's uh, my mother. My mother yells at me all the time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think what else. What else? It's pretty much it, right? Yeah. I mean, touch, touch pretty much everything that's going that's on. All right Rutgers athletics. Um, yo, someone make us a theme song. I need a there theme song to like an intro song. So if you're good with music, hit me up. We need a theme song. I want, I don't want like a Craig and Evan type thing or Craig and, uh, no, it was Craig and Evan. I was right. Yep. <laughs> uh, Craig and Evan type like theme song <laughs> intro, maybe, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Something, something that like that. Long? We need something cool to like introduce us. But, uh, yeah. I guess we... Chris and Richie. Yeah. See, there you go. We don't have a Jerry Recco with us, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah. We'll, we'll consider Craig our Jerry Recco. <laughs> he's a sarcastic uh yeah he's right. not gonna say the word <laughs> yeah he's sarcastic <laughs> but like yeah, that he I just gotcha. joins yeah. just the bus balls and that's pretty much it <laughs> um yeah i mean that's that's pretty much everything i guess right 
yeah so all right yeah, as I, always I mean, if you guys if you guys are, that are watching this have have questions you guys want to ask for next time you know let us know drop a yeah like a i said comment, we're trying to do this once whatever, a week message us yeah try to do it once a week um jump on the boards throw some questions there send me some dms um don't send me the annoying dms because i'm tired of it i'm tired of this sucks this sucks why aren't we recruiting another quarterback i just explained it all so stop <laughs> sending me those um but uh yeah if you guys want to send us some dms on twitter some comments down below we'll try to answer everything um yeah i guess that's that's kind of it keep chopping cool. yep thanks for watching